This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome back to Living for God's Word, where the plan is to read the Bible in 52 weeks using the book by Dr. Kimberly D. Moore, The Bible in 52 Weeks, a year-long Bible study for women. If this is your first time coming across my channel, I welcome you and I am so grateful to God to have you come through this way. Um, we are reviewing um, week 14 of last week's reading um, that was on page 48. And so before we get into it, let us go to the throne of grace. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you thanking you for who you are. You're an awesome God. You are the God of promises, oh God. You are faithful to your promises. And let us use our faith that you have given us, just the faith of a mustard seed, Lord God, that uh, we would trust what you say in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So this week, this past week, the uh, title of the, uh, the the reading plan was I Am a Winner. And we read Joshua um, 17. We picked up and we went all the way through Judges um, chapter 10. So this week, Dr. Moore focuses on, focuses on Judges 7 through 10. And the story um, that we are, um, that we reviewed um, this past week was about um, Gideon and the victory over the, over the Midianites and God's promises. Oh God, this is an awesome, awesome story. So, um, Page 49 of the book, um, Dr. Moore um, gives us a background about the competitiveness of football, basketball, and baseball seasons. And I will not um, read all of it, but I will skip down to the second paragraph, um, and I'll read this. In the book of Judges, we find an account of how God gave Gideon victory over his enemy. In Judges 6, Israel had become rebellious. And God allowed the nation of Midian to take dominion over them. Gideon didn't think that he had what it took to accomplish the assignment. His tribe was the weakest of the bunch, and there was no way they'd be able to take on the Midianites. That was in his mind. We do that to this day, right? So Gideon asked God for a sign, and God gave it to him. In fact, God gave him several signs to prove that he was with him. Because Gideon was like a lot of us. We don't always take God at his word. And we want sign after sign so that we can be assured that he's going to do what he said that he that he would do. So this this I'm going to pause here and I'm going to read um, Judges uh, 7, 9, 3, 11. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so I use the uh, New King James Version of the Women's Study Bible. And in the description, you will find all the resources on how to get Dr. Moore's book and whatever um, translations that she uses, which is the New Living Translation and the New King James Version. But if you have a, a different version, please use that one. So I'm just thanking God that you are reading his word. And so um, I will just take a pause and just... Uh, since we went from Joshua, now we're in Judges, I'll give a quick background in, in my Bible. In most Bibles, you will find that there is a um, a background or outline of the book that you're reading. So I'm, I'll read this real quick. Judges, um, the title of the book of Judges um, is the same in the Vulgate as well. Um, the book introduces the military leaders known as Judges whom God raised up to deliver Israel from oppression. Divinely appointed and empowered, they did not rule here, excuse me, they did not rule by heredity. The author, um, although containing no explicit claim to authorship, traditionally the book of Judges has been ascribed to Samuel. Um, okay, so the background, the setting. During this time of decadence and weakness in the Egyptian Hittite in Assyrian empires, a vacuum of power existed. In Canaan, Israel was a tiny emerging nation, actually still a league of tribes. Canaan, an extremely important land at the crossroads of three empires, was inhabited by an incredible mix of peoples and religions. It was regarded as the linking highway of the ancient world. The Book of Judges records the history of Israel from Joshua's death to Samuel's leadership and the beginning of the monarchy around 1050 BC before Christ. If the terms of all the judges were added together, the total span of time recorded in the book of Judges would 
exceed 400 years, presenting a chronological difficulty. A solution to this challenge lies in the observation that most likely the judges were local deliverers whose terms overlapped, except for some, like Deborah, who were national leaders. The purpose of the book of Judges describes the history of Israel from a theological, spiritual viewpoint. The book records one of the darkest periods in Israel's history. The history is recorded honestly, with no apparent attempts to gloss over the repeated failures of God's people. I'll stop there, but so um, this was a great background. So um, I'm going to now jump into Joshua 7, verse 9 through 11. It happened on the same night that the Lord said to him, Arise, go down against the camp, for I, for I have delivered it into your hand. He told him that. But if you are afraid to go down, go down to the camp with uh, Purah, your servant, and you shall hear what they say. And afterward, your hands will be strengthened to go down against the camp. Then he went down with Purah, his servant, to the outpost of the armed men who were in the camp. So he he was obedient. He, he, he was obedient. So now I'll go back to Dr. Moore's comments here on page... 49. And so she goes on to say that um, when Gideon <clears throat> was finally convinced, he brought an army of 32,000, now these are numbers, 32,000 men to battle the Midianites. But God had him send all but 300, saying he would provide victory. Mm -hmm. Yes, God kept his promise. With just 300 men, Gideon was victorious over the Midianites. Hallelujah. Sometimes you just have to stand on what God says alone. That is what we call faith. You just stand on what he says. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 11, 1, which is one of my favorite scriptures. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Meditate on that. When you don't have the evidence, you have to trust what he says, even if it doesn't make sense. If God has already called you a winner, you are a winner. If God has said you are a success, then you are a success. You don't need a sign or a secret code. You just need the faith. So I'm not going to finish um, the bottom of 49, but basically this is about um, just trusting God, just trusting him. I, I, so much easier said than done, but if we just put our trust in him, um, just put our trust. I'm thinking about our former pastor who um, passed away a couple years ago, and he would always say, um, put your trust in him. And it's he would just say that, and you, you sometimes you, you just have to just grow into that. So um, you hear that all the time, just put your trust in him, but a lot of times you don't really know what that means until you're faced with a, a circumstance. There is a story you may have people who whoever's watching this, you may have heard this. Um, and that was um, I hope I tell this joke right. So there was a man or a woman, doesn't matter, but there was a person who was um, in the in a storm. I guess his house was um, knee deep in water, and he was on a roof. And so um, he says, oh, I'm just going to trust God. So, um, and I know I'm skipping over this, but basically he said, I'm just going to trust God, right? But um, he said, you know, helicopter came. He says, no, I'm going to trust God. A boat came. Oh, I'm just going to trust God. Well, then the water rose so much that he died. And so when he got to, you know, heaven, he says, you know, God, I trusted you. Why didn't you do what you said you were going to do? He says, well, I sent you, you know, a, a, a boat or a helicopter. I, I sent you all those things. So, so, and the reason I'm saying that story is, Faith takes action as well. So in, what Gideon did was he, he trusted God and he did what he said. So you still have to trust him and follow his promptings, which is, you know, just follow his promptings. So, um, yeah, so that that's uh, basically it. So then I'm going to jump. Oh, actually, Dr. Moore does, um, she does mention Romans 831, which is awesome. So she does say, oh, 
if God is for us, who can be against us? That's another one. That was one of my aunt's favorite um, scriptures. If God is for us, and you may have heard it said this way, if God is for us, it doesn't matter who's against us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just like in Gideon, it didn't matter that the Midianites were against him. It didn't matter. It didn't matter who it was because if God is for you, he is for you, and he will make a way out of no way. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's Romans 8.31. Um, that, that kind of favor, and that's favor that makes, it, makes us winners. Points to ponder this past week. Number one, would you have trusted God's instructions to send most of your men home if, if you were Gideon? Why or why not? I will say that my faith has grown over the last couple of years. But if I if you if I were to answer this question based on two years ago, mm, yeah, I would say about two years ago, even though faith was something that I always um you know, I I, I did stand on faith a lot with God and he's brought me through a lot of things even up until two years ago but I have learned more in the last, within the last couple of years to actually surrender that's for me it's surrender just don't think just try, don't think about it just put it in God's hand put your and that's when I realized what the pastor was saying was just put your trust in him just you, it's not it's not about you you can't do anything but through God who strengthens you. So he's the one who provides. So if we we can't take credit and say, oh, it was me, I did it. No, God did it. He made that way. And so I've, I've grown in that area. So um, question two, has there been a time in your life when you trusted God and succeeded against the odds? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. And, um, and, I, and I saw marvelous things happen when I did that, when I surrendered to him. I was like, is it that simple, God? And he said, yes, it is. I don't know why we make it more difficult than it has to be. It's really just that simple. Trust him. For me, it's surrender. Surrender is part of trust and faith. But for me, it's when I realized what surrender meant. <laughs> Whew. Hallelujah. Okay, and uh, her third question, what Dr. Moore's third question was in Judges 7, 9 through 11, God instructs Gideon to go to his enemy's camp. Why and what were the results? So why did um, God instruct him to go to his camp? And and so my answer was that um, God instructed him to go to, to, um, to, to, uh, to me it was about saying to him, and, I, and again, I'm not, I am not a, um, biblical scholar <laughs> but what again what I'm getting out of this is God said just watch me do what I'm going to do in fact let me see if my bible does um I didn't think about that but I do have a study bible which is at the at the bottom of each it does have commentary um <laughs> well let me I'm going to get to that but let me read the verse of the week that um Dr. Moore has on page 50 the Lord told Gideon with these 300 men I will rescue you and give you victory over the Midianites. Send all the others home. So Gideon collected the provisions and Ramses' horns of the other warriors and sent them home. But he kept 300 men with him. The Midianite camp was in the valley just below Gideon. That night the Lord said, Get up, go down into the Midianite camp, for I have given you victory over them. He, he, God said, Just go ahead and do it. And, and Gideon. Gideon uh, trusted God, and I'm going to look at my study Bible to see why God is just kids. Why and what were the results? I gave you my answer, and I will see if my study Bible has commentary on that. Just so I seven. Okay, um, actually. It gives commentary on verses 2 through 7. Through seven. I'll just read it. It says, No conclusive evidence demonstrates something special or better about those warriors who knelt down and scooped up the water while remaining alert. Okay, this is probably not really what... Rather, this limitation is the number of troops reaffirmed that the battle was God's. Okay, so the battle, the battle was God's. Okay. The battle was God's. That's what this is all about. The battle's not yours. That's what I mean by I learned to surrender because it's not me. It's the Lord. <laughs> uh, God's power, not human power, would destroy the enemies of his people. 
Just put your trust in him. That's all we have to do is, is try it. Just try it and you will see. Just give the Lord a try. Whew, hallelujah. So thank you for listening. And I will um, go into, well, I will um, list the readings for the week starting tomorrow, which is week 15. And it's titled Trust His Track Record. It's on, on page 51 of Dr. Moore's book. And uh, day one, the reading is Judges 11 through 14. Day two is Judges 15 through 17. Day three is Judges 18 through 21. Day four, we're back in Psalms, Psalms 26 through 29. Day five, uh, Psalms 30 through 33. Day six is Psalms 34 through 37. And day seven is the, the day to catch up. That's when I said I would come back and... Um, and share my points to ponder as you share your points, as you work on your points to ponder. Um, this is an individual reading plan, but I just am so grateful to God that you are coming alongside with me. Me, I pray for you, you pray for me, and we are women after God's own heart. Slam this giant of getting through the Bible reading of, of 52 weeks and just trusting God that he will reveal to us what he wants us to, to understand about his word. His word is living. We cannot read it once and expect to know everything about God's word. We grow into God's word. His word never changes. So that let that be an encouragement um, to just continue to read God's word in the name of Jesus. Amen.